Okay, so here we are in the studio and um, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm experimenting a little bit with uh, watercolours uh, at the moment and um, I'm using some of the inspiration from last week's lesson which is based on this picture of a newt and I'll be getting out the picture of um, the magpie as well um, having looked at that book that we looked at last week um, I've also been looking at a few other like little books on watercolours as well um, but one of the first things I'm going to be doing today is um, just going to tape up a few pieces of this watercolour paper so I'm using at the moment um, Arteza watercolour paper it's quite a small pad but it's great for experimenting and just doing small pieces of work as well um, it's a uh, hundred and forty pound or three hundred uh, GSM or GM squared paper um, I bought these online on the Amazon website and there were 20 quid for three of these quite thick pads of 30 sheets in each one so it's nice thick sort of paper got uh, a little bit of texture on it as well so it'd be quite interesting to see how it works when I use it. Uh, I'm going to be using my Winsor & Newton uh, watercolours and and my Arteza um, watercolour pens and then I'll probably be working back into it with some um, pens and stuff as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to secure the paper on to these bits of board with some just a little bit of masking tape. Uh, I'm going to do about three pieces of work purely because uh, I mean you can use a hair dryer but in between different layers of watercolour etc uh, they need to dry off and things as well so you need to let things <coughs> dry between layers and that's really important so here we go I'm just going to tape up my paper. The other thing, nice thing it does, put it down nice and straight, is it masks off the corners of the page, gives you a nice little border on your work as well. So we're just going to stick a few of these sheets in. There's my first one. I'm probably going to do my newt, as I'm really into those at the moment. I'll show you my other drawing too. And the other thing I'm intending to do is a few experimental. Um, ideas as well a few techniques during the lesson as well on some of this paper so usually I work with water uh, I work sorry I work with acrylic paints uh, and mixed media um, <clears throat> and I use often use a little bit of watercolor mixed in with uh, a lot of my work um, so I'm going to use some of the stuff techniques I know and we're going to be experimenting with a few other techniques too along the way. Um, so I made a list of all the different types of techniques on this sheet over here which I can um, talk about um, as we progress. So I've got about three sheets of this lovely thick chunky paper which I'm quite excited about using today. Uh, yeah, as I said, you know, between layers, you want to let um, let your paint dry for different reasons. So, if the page is too wet and the paper's too wet, and you work on it, you can wear the paper down. But also, of course, um, <clears throat> if it's too wet to paint over the top of, you're going to have a few issues if you want to do more detailed and precise work too. So we're just going to stick those on there quickly and what I'm doing it's the morning now on Sunday and I'm going to do this I'm going to go away have my um, Sunday lunch and then I'll come back and I'll do a little bit now and a little bit in the class and a little well a little bit now a little bit later a little bit uh, when we actually uh, have the lesson together um, we've got some fantastic techniques scratching through the paper uh, using cling film 
all these sorts of things that would be quite exciting and interesting to use when it comes to making the painting. So the new above here, above the page just here is, um, is the drawing that I did the other day. Uh, and what I've done is I've done a, a wash of colour here. This area I did with the Arteza pencils, uh, sorry, the Arteza watercolour pens over here. And this little leg I did the same thing. I'll just zoom in on that while we're talking and just show you a little bit more detail. Let's see if that needs to be focused a bit better. So you can see on here I've used a mixture of the Arteza pens and then I've gone back in with a white pen to add highlights. Just bring in a bit more. So I've added some details in with the black pen that I really like using as you know and then some white watercolours but I've used white uh, sort of a wet down surface on here and then um, I've kind of added other colours of, of uh, the ink pens or the watercolour pens on top to create the sort of feel of the newt. Um, <clears throat> and this this was done uh, just on some some plain uh, cartridge paper. The problem with that, of course, is that we go <laughs> very quickly start to go through the paper. You can see it on the back here. It actually creates creates quite an interesting effect in itself. Um, but it, um, it, you know, the paper uh, isn't designed for that kind of work, which is why I've got some of this so that we can uh, try that out during the lesson. A lot of you who've done watercolours for quite a few years will have um, some paper, but if you haven't, um, you can use the um, normal cartridge paper, but um, just be aware that you need to let things dry or um, do what some people do which is get a hair dryer or a, a heat gun or whatever it is to um, dry everything off. So I've got three boards just here and I'm going to be drawing the newt and the magpie and possibly something else on top. So these are these boards I just I had these cut for when I do my artwork, so I, I usually work when I do collage work. I work straight over the top of um, I work straight over the top of uh, board because I, I really like the solid hard surface of of board. Most of my collage work is done on that, but I had these bits lying around, and I thought, yeah, okay, I'll I'll use these these nice small bits, which is perfect for this Arteza size paper and I'll paint over the top of those or I'll put my paper on top of those so um, <clears throat> so on here I've got some different techniques that we're going to try out so we've got wet on wet which is um, putting the uh, put, put the wet make a wet surface on the on the paper wet on dry paper uh, for sharper con more control and edges uh, a gradient and we'll do a, try a gradient with a brush pen and we'll try a gradient with um, normal watercolour. Uh, masking fluid to block off areas uh, and you can use a silicon sort of um, a silicon tool for that as well so here's, here's a silicon tool that I've got it's got kind of a it feels like rubbery but it's silicon and you can draw your masking fluid on with that. Um, salt, putting salt on the work, which a lot of people will be familiar with, uh, using a craft knife to scratch the surface, using cling film on the top of the surface of the paper that's already wet, leaving it and then peeling it off later. We've got uh, using a paper towel to dab and make blotchy areas, splatters and drips. Uh, number 10 here, we've got salt in a cup of water to make these explosions on the page. Bleach, which reacts a little bit differently. Um, gauze as well. Um, I don't know if I've got any gauze, but I'll have a look and see if we can use that. Um, baking sheet, which I saw as well. 
pure alcohol, which I don't have any of that, but we can have a play around with some something else. Uh, rice and masking fluid and a dippy pen as well. So there's loads of different things we can experiment with during this process. And I may even decide to do that on uh, a picture of a newt and things. But I'm now going to have a little draw, draw out my newt onto at a small scale compared to my A3 picture obviously but we'll give it a go. Okay here we are again then so um, uh, I've just been away uh, for a few moments there and I spent a little bit of time preparing uh, some boards so uh, when you saw me a moment ago I said I talked about drawing um, doing a little painting of a newt uh, which I had a photograph of um, before that you've seen and um, I also mentioned uh, a whole raft of different techniques that you can use doing uh, watercolours that uh, we can try out including using the Arteza pens um, as well so we're going to try a few of those things out and uh, the other thing I mentioned was using uh, some masking uh, fluid as well. So uh, I've got this um, picture here of uh, a magpie and what I really liked about this magpie was that you've got all of these beautiful um, blended blues and greens in here so uh, against this nice uh, orangey kind of brown in the background I suppose you might call it um, like a I don't know like a yellow ochre mixed with um, a bit of burnt umber or something like that but um, we're going to have a look at some of those ideas uh, when we paint um, these pictures. Uh, here's the little sketch that I did. I basically just try to cram these um, animals uh, into the board. So I'm just uh, there's no shading on here whatsoever. I've just done a little bit of um, uh, outlining to get the basic shapes in. Uh, this one's going to be quite good uh, for doing. Um, uh, adding some of the uh, masking fluid on here so uh, so what I'm going to do I think is probably put in some masking fluid on the white areas of the bird perhaps a little bit in the eyes as well so that will mask off and keep that white so that um, when I've put down all of my colors and have my fun there I can then um, peel off and add some of these blue shadows on top of that one just there and uh, with my newt um, uh, I talked about that last time just a moment ago about how I've used the Arteza pens on there as well so I'm gonna just have a little play around a bit of experiment with that too um, and then ready for our lesson uh, there are some nice squares that I've done to do some experimenting in I've mounted that up with tape as well and just some squares at different sizes so that perhaps we can uh, mix up these different techniques and things as well um, there's loads of different things you can do with watercolors obviously and we're just going to try out a few of them um, and then try to apply those to the drawings that you did last week. So if you did a drawing last week, a uh, pencil drawing, you might want to get the outline drawn onto your paper so that you're ready to have a little play around with it. But as I said, you don't need to do um, any or much shading at all on there um, because we're going to be working back over. Indeed, my drawings are perhaps a little bit uh, dark on the dark side. so you got to remember of course is that some of those pencil marks are going to come through uh, your watercolors because watercolors as you probably aware are um, transparent as well um, but I've made them a bit darker here so that you can <laughs> so you can just uh, see very clearly what I'm um, what I'm up to okay so here we go then Okay, so here we are then in, with uh, a few materials now prepared. So just a few minutes ago I prepared the um, boards that I'm going to work on and I also showed you the drawings that we're going to be using as well. 
Um, so in front of me here, I've, what I've done is I've made a list of some of the different things that we can try out. So there's everything from wet on wet to wet on dry, gradienting with uh, a brush pen. So I'll need to get one of those out in a little bit. Masking fluid uh, to mask areas of the picture off so that then I can put the colour back over or I can put colour on top and then uh, wash it back, uh, then peel the masking fluid um, off. We've got salt, uh, which we're going to try putting on a wet um, surface, using a craft knife to scratch areas away as well, which will be good fun. Uh, cling film I haven't got with me at the moment, but we'll probably try that in the class. Paper towels to dab areas out. I've got a little bit of tissue over there, which I'm going to try. Splatters and drips, uh, salt in a cup, of water as well um, which I haven't yet prepared but will do uh, at some point and I have prepared some bleach in water um, so we'll have a look and see how that goes I'm not sure how it will work but uh, um, I've not tried the bleach in water before but we'll see how it goes one thing I have just tried out which you can see on here so this um, bit of blue over here was done with um, some of these Arteza um, watercolour pens and I put some bleach on it look and uh, it reacts really well with bleach so basically it takes the colour back out so that might be and if you're using Arteza it might be another way to sort of um, manipulate the, um, the surface uh, if you don't have um, if you don't have any masking fluid you could take areas back out. I don't know how it works with other colours at this point but we, we can we can see that a little bit later on I suppose. Right so I'm get, what, what we've got here is we've got a, a little board with um, six squares on it and I'm just going to do a little bit of um, try, trying things out before I move on to experimenting with the uh, magpie as well so I'm going to give that a little try right now so the first one I think I'm going to do is a little bit of wet on wet with a couple of colors over here so I've got my watercolors so I'm just going to zoom back out again so we can have a little crack on this one uh, right so obviously you just need a bit of water in your watercolors so the first thing to do is Work out where you want the color to where you want the color to go on uh, the the design or the picture that you're working from. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to put some water down in one of these squares just here. So obviously you might not be able to see that very well, but I can certainly see where I've just put that water and then we go over and mix I'm going to go for my favorite color which is a nice blue it may help of course if you've mixed your colors first because you can just go straight in uh, and then I'm just gonna put down some color on the wet area and we'll swap over to a different color we'll swap over to a different color as well put some of that in um, I'll go for a nice green because again that's one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to get some of this color over here. Put that down in the palette. And then we just use the side of the brush like this to move some of the color about. I've gone over the edge there. Just wipe that off and a bit more of the old blue as well and obviously you can layer these colors on top of each other as they dry so the reason why I've, I've got a few boards is so that I can do work on some different things whilst we're doing this project so um, let's zoom into that and have a quick look what I've just done, I should have zoomed in a second ago I suppose really, but you can see there how the colours, I've, I've, what, I've, what I've done basically is put some water on the surface of this paper, the watercolour paper, and then just dabbed on and it creates this lovely um, 
uh, sort of blurry effect on there as well, which which looks really nice, uh, and it's great for using on skies and stuff like that as well. Okay, there goes my dog, being a pain in the bum as usual. All right, and then just over here, what we're going to do is try. Right, we're just going to pause a second actually. Oh, back again. Sorry about that, everyone. Right, um, let's just continue. Okay, so um, there we go then. We've had a little try at that. Let's um, just see if I can make sure it's in focus. So a really um, pretty basic uh, technique there, wet on wet. It's already started drying on this watercolor paper um, or soaking in a little bit. And you'll find as well with watercolors that they they do get a bit lighter as well as they dry quite often. All right, so the next one, what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put some water down, but I'm gonna leave some areas without water on this. Uh, so we can do a bit of a mixture, I suppose, wet on wet and wet on dry at the same time. So I'm going to choose another colour for this one so we can see the difference uh, in the techniques. So let's get, so let's see now. So if I do, I can do these lovely sort of detailed lines and stuff. And then as we move over to the other part of the picture or the little sample, you can see how it um, changes. Uh, in other words, you get these nice precise edges and lines on the dry paper with your wet paint. <clears throat> and then the rest of it is pretty much like the last one. So you get all these like nice bleeding colours. And then over here we get more precise lines so you can mix those things up so I mean that's very kind of clear there but um, when you're doing again when you're doing things like skies or other details you can work um, you can work a bit more loosely I suppose this is quite loose but um, once you say doing the sky and you want some more dramatic or sharp edges in the sky rather than the blurry ones you can do it on a dry area and indeed you can go of course you can which is a lot of what this is about is layering color on top of each other you can go back to an area once it's dry and reapply another layer all right okay so uh, what we're going to do next uh, so we will do a gradient now I'm going to turn this around and zoom out slightly just get these pots out of the way which um, I'm going to talk about in a little while so just down here, what I'll do now is a little bit of a gradient. So I'm just going to go for it with that. I'm going to use this lovely blue. I'll perhaps get a darker blue on this one. Got some quite a good range of colours on this um, set over here, which is really nice. So we're going to put a bit of colour on. But then I'm just going to add a touch of water as we go across. The nice thing about this paper is that um, it's got a lovely sort of woven texture to it, which um, looks really nice when you um, are working with these watercolours. So a lot of the colour kind of sits inside of the grain of the paper. There we go. So basically what I've done here is I've just added a little bit of water uh, to the um, paint as I've gone across 
and that's, that's lightened it. Obviously water is transparent so you get the transparency going through there. Uh, <clears throat> if you do find you get a little bit too much water on there you can also blot it off and stuff too. Uh, so you can just get that in and suck it back up again if you want to do that. So there's quite a nice little uh, gradient on there. Actually it needs a bit more blending just through here. So the important thing to do with, when you're doing this sort of watercolory stuff is not to like keep working and overworking the the uh, the paint. Once you've got it, best time to do, uh, best time to stop really, <clears throat> or leave it to dry for a while. Okay, so there's a little gradient. Now I was gonna I was gonna try a uh, pen as well. So I'll just see if I can find one. So here's the Arteza pens. Uh, I've not tried doing a gradient on watercolour paper with these yet, so we're going to have a little go with that right now. Um, <clears throat> now, let's just see. So first of all, we'll try it by putting on some water, first of all, onto the surface. We'll see it's a little bit blue anyway now. And I'm going to start at the other end just here. Now you can get these lovely flat areas of colour using these, um, although because the paper is a bit textured on the um, Arteza paper, um, what you tend to get is a little bit of graininess, so you have to sort of work back into that. So oh, that's quite easy, quite easy to do. Quite a, um, it feels like I've got a little bit more control with these and I've got much more of a solid colour over here. Obviously if I wanted a more solid colour um, with the brush and the watercolours paints then all, I'll ha all, all I'd have to do there is uh, either wait for it to dry and go over it or just keep adding more pigment from the pad. But that's actually looking quite nice isn't it? So all I did here was add some watercolour on this side sorry some water on this side started to brush across with the um, real brush pen uh, which is actually a turtle green it's a beautiful color another color that I really like I probably like this color more than most colors um, so let's just uh, before we go any further I'm just going to label that so we've got wet on wet wet on dry we've got a gradient I'm right over the watercolour there where I've gone over a gradient and a brush pen brilliant there we go so um, what should we try now then um, yeah I'll um, right I'm gonna put some colour down on the surface uh, again, so this time I'm just going to do uh, wet onto onto dry paper. Uh, so I'm going to go for a nice dark brown on this one, nice dark brown um, <clears throat> with a bit plenty of water. So I'm going to spread it out. And this one we're going to try a little bit of salt on here. Now um, I didn't have any sea salt granules but what I've done is I've got some granules of salt from um, dishwasher salt it's got quite big granules on here so we're gonna have a little try with that just here so here's my little pot of uh, sea salt which I'm gonna put down on there right now Focus that. Okay. So we're just going to put those on the surface. Again, this this might be something to play around with to see what happens. Is it going to be? Uh, is is the paper going to need? Does it need to be wetter 
I don't know, we're going to have a little try with that too. And then um, over here, I'm going to try it with the our teaser pens as well. But um, what I'll need to do, I'll get a different colour for this. I suppose it does depend. I'm going to use this nice purple, I think, just here. So the thing to do is leave that because the what's supposed to happen, and I don't know if it will work with um, these granules, it looks like in places it is already. Um, but um, uh, So we're going to see if it, if it soaks in there uh, nicely. Now I've got this nice pen here. I'm just going to, it's quite a strong colour, I'm just watering the pen down already. So I just dipped it in just water. So the only thing that worries me about these pens is what do you do with them once they've run out? But um, I'm not going to worry too much about that at this point. So I'm just putting down, covering this area with this nice colour which is called Wisteria Purple. Oh, very romantic name. So put that on there. And then uh, I'm going to add some water with my normal brush. So I've got the brown off from the last one. So it's nice and damp, or wet I should say. And then I'm going to try salt on the Arteza. And we'll see what happens there. So let's make sure there's enough water on there. That seems quite good. And then we're going to put on a few salt granules from dishwasher granules and see if we get what sort of result we get there. So we're going to leave that for a few minutes there like that. See if we can get a cluster of something or another from using these. They already seem to be soaking stuff up. I think it probably happens quite quickly because if the, all the water soaks into the salt then the paper might dry quickly. Okay, so we've got um, a few lovely techniques. I quite like what's happened to the blue up here as well. We've got this lovely effect where the water has kind of changed the way that the, the gradient has gone. This gradient is say pretty much the same, although it's blending a little bit over here as well. So quite an exciting little um, experiment um, and pretty easy for you to try out with or without the pens. So I've got another board over here. I'm going to do the same sort of thing, only this time we're going to do some other stuff. Alright, so um, all of these techniques obviously can be applied for backgrounds, um, for skies like I've said, um, and for different parts of your animals or, or leaves or foliage that you're going to be putting into your work as well. Okay, so um, now I have got a few other little things here that I'd like to try. So first of all I've got rice which um, you can put on top of your picture. And I've got this as well, I thought I'd try a bit of couscous. Having not ever thought of using this before, I thought, well, why not just give it a go and we'll see what happens. I'm not expecting too much, but you know, you never know. Okay, so we're gonna get some pigment from over here again. Uh, so I'm gonna get a nice uh, sort of bold, pinky, magenta -y color. And I'll put that down on the surface like this. I get plenty of pigment. Make sure it's nice and wet. So obviously this, um, the water and that is going to sit on the surface of the paper like this. And then what I'm going to do is put my rice on. And we'll see what kind of effect that has, if indeed any. Okay, and then what I'm going to try is some couscous. And I'm going to use a nice dark green for that one, just below. Oh no, it's come out a bit different. It's actually a Payne's Grey or something like that. Um, all the packaging, of course, had all the names of the colours on them when I got them, but um, has now now that's not the case. 
it might actually be on the side of the containers I'm not sure but I'll have a quick look in a minute okay so plenty of water plenty of pigment on there and then we're going to try just drop it I, I, show, I thought this would be quite interesting because couscous is quite small isn't it it's quite grainy so it might be quite effective it might not do anything at all or it might just create a completely different effect that I'm not expecting so there goes me couscous and the next thing now I may have um, I think I probably put a little bit too much bleach in here but I put water and bleach together and um, I believe it does something quite interesting with um, with watercolour um, it's the, the way that the water spreads out or the ink spreads out across the page so just to make sure my brushes are clean spread this out a little bit so I'm just gonna go outside of there like that so this is bleachy water um, wash my brush and we'll mix a nice oh I think I might go for a might go for a nice blue again a nice dark blue so all I'm going to do is put some of that color in the middle of the page like this and see I believe it's supposed to spread out quite a bit I'll get another one. Yeah, it's making these little star shapes at the moment. There we go. And I suppose when that's dry, you can also work over it as well. So that's bleach mixed with <coughs> mixed with watercolour paint. Now I suppose what I should do, as we've got these pens out at the moment, I should also try a bleachy water with a pen. Now I'm not sure how this is going to go either, but um, we're going to give it a go. Put plenty on there. It seems to be spreading out quite nicely up there. So I'm going to put on some of this colour again. I'm not sure if it's going to... No, it's actually bleaching the brush a little bit. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to do something a bit bigger with a bit of red. Get plenty of water colour on there. And we'll do a nice big bit in the middle. Let's see if we can get that to see if that does anything. So that's looking quite nice over there, spreading out quite well. Now the other thing I could also do is um, add in a little bit of uh, salt into water as well. I'll dissolve that in, but we can try that a bit later on. I'm going to put some of this orange on as too. See if anything happens with that. I may have put too much bleach on but actually it's got a really lovely kind of quality to it down here as well all right so um, now one of the other things I wanted to try was um, uh, what was it ah yes doing a dabby sort of area as well on here so um, <clears throat> and by that I mean using a bit of tissue paper to pay, take the color back off um, although um, paper towels are probably a little bit better for this so we're going to put that water on there oh it does actually have the name of the colours printed on the side of the watercolours there so if you've got a set of these sorts and you're wondering what colour it is have a look on the side right so I've done that that's wet on wet we're doing now so I'm going to get plenty of colour just 
going to put that on there. Yeah, another bit of yellowy ochre colour mixed with the green. I mean, that in itself is quite nice, isn't it? Right. Obviously, you can make these colours much more um, subtle and things when you're working with them. That's, that's worked out quite nicely. It's actually got kind of a speckly quality to it over there. Right, and then um, you can you can uh, dab, scrunch up the paper a little bit, a little bit of tissue. We'll see what happens when we do that. There, so we've got this lovely, it's almost just taking a bit of the colour off and leaving a bit of texture behind. So quite pleased with that. So <clears throat> over here we've got bleach. Over here we've got couscous. And here we've got some rice. So whether I need to fiddle around with these a little bit more, it looks like I'm getting some little dots on the couscous. Yeah, I am getting some little dots on there. And the rice is leaving little dark bits behind. So, oh look, and this one where it's particularly wet has got, oops. <laughs> and this one where it's particularly wet, just over here, has got this kind of uh, glowing splatter thing on it. So maybe some more water, that would be really nice as well. And over here, this one just come back out again so you can see what I'm doing and this one was dabbing scrunched tissue paper so we've got a few different effects here so that was with uh, so they're both with uh, that's watercolors as well Okay, so there we go with that one. Um, I'm just going to put that out over there. And I'm going to get my magpie next. There we go. And then as soon as those are all dry, what we'll do is we'll come back and have a quick look at them and see what those are like. So magpie over here. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm not going to do all of it, I'm going to do some of it so that I can talk about it in less than a little bit more. Um, but we've got this lovely um, art masking fluid just here which is uh, really nice to work with. Um, because what you can basically do is you can mask out areas of your picture and then later on you rub the masking fluid back off the paper and you'll get... Um, and you get the area you know that's white alternatively of course you could put down some color first and then um, then do a mask put a mask on and then put some more color on top so you get layers of multiple colors coming through which is a lot of fun too so here we have um, actually I will get another little board for experimenting um, before I go any further so masking fluid you can put a little bit on uh, something like a little silicon stick and you can make some interesting marks so this one this silicon uh, brush if you want to call it a brush has got um, it's got like a little I'll just focus in on that if I can Whoop. it's got a little wedge on it there we go it's got a little wedge on the end look so when you obviously when you apply the kind of gloopy liquid of masking fluid on there, um, it uh, it can make different marks than you perhaps could with a brush. Whereas you might be a bit more precise with a brush, you're actually creating more natural marks with uh, one of these. And I've got some with all different shapes on, so I've got a more pointy one and things. Um, I, I did actually get them because somebody had recommended 
that um, if you use masking fluid you could use these um, because they won't ruin your brush um, so once you've done it you just go like that and it's gone okay so the next thing to try out with would be uh, using a little brush as well Mm -hmm. So I need to find one of those to use in a few minutes. Let's see if I can find one. Well, I'll come back to that in just a few seconds. So, um, so I've. You can't really see it on here, but when I when it's dry, what I'll do is I'll do a wash of colour over the top and take that off afterwards. Um, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a crack with putting some on the magpie. So you can see on the magpie, um, there's lots of these white areas on there, which I'm going to apply the masking fluid to. So. Um, I did I actually got this special stuff which um, which is really apparently really good for getting all the sticky stuff off which hence the name um, but um, as a few people mentioned you can use uh, some soap and water on your brush so you can get it off so I'm just going to try out a few different things um, and experiment a bit with that so I'm just painting on the masking fluid onto the white areas of my beautiful little bird here. I'm just going to do this top wing and let that dry and then in a little while we'll do a wash over the top of the wings so it goes on quite nicely actually um, and it peels off beautifully so it's really nice to do and of course the other thing you could do is you could use uh, some candle wax or wax crayon on here which will resist the water which will mean that so if we used a white can uh, if we used a white candle or a white wax crayon and then you um, apply your watercolor over the top you can peel it back uh, sorry no um, <laughs> if you use white um, candle wax then paint over the top the wax will resist the um, the watercolor so you'll still get the white coming through and we can I can do a little demo of that on a separate piece as well should we need it there we go so oh, I'm getting carried away now it's not taking as long as I thought it might do so you know, put a little bit of that on there. I'm gonna put a bit on the beak while I'm here. And a bit in the I'm just gonna do the whole of the eye because I can actually go back with dry brush. Um sorry, a wet brush on dry surface when all of this is in and done. So um I've added now those things onto uh, my magpie and I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back in a short while and um, I'll do some work back over the top with um, the watercolour so I'll be doing wet on wet in some areas that I want the colours to bleed on and then um, I'll be adding some darker colour over this side maybe some browns here if you look at the bird <coughs> uh, some of these feathers are like a brownie colour and then over here we've got the blacks then here we've got the blues, um, which I'd like to have more of a blendy sort of effect on a little bit later. But that's in preparation for our lesson on Monday and Tuesday as well. Um, so there we go. We've tried that. Now, of course, you can also uh, you can also splatter with this stuff on the surface, so you get much again a very natural sort of feel. <sighs> to the uh, surface that you're working on as well so there's loads of different things you can do so I'm just going to put that aside and I'm going to go back and see how we're doing over here 
So that's looking pretty dry there. So we're going to do one other thing, which is uh, use. Um, I'm going to use a knife on that surface. Yeah, we'll use a knife on that surface. Ah, here we go. So I've got one of the scalpel blade, and um, it'd be better if it was a bit darker actually. So I'm just going to use this gradient. Uh, that I did with a brush pen, see if it works on there. So there you go, you can scratch out details. Let's get in a bit closer to that. So you can scratch out details with a scalpel blade to get fine lines, or, or when I say fine lines, I mean like scratchy sorts of surfaces with a little bit of texture on as well. So let's just zoom into that so you can see what I've just done. There we are, you see? So you've got these nice scratchy surfaces on the brush pen. And I'll try it on the watercolor too. So let's try it on the watercolor over here as well. That's a little bit damp still, but it comes off quite nicely with a nice sharp uh, scalpel blade like this one. Alright, so we've done, I'll write that on there as well. So, uh, scalpel blade scratching, scalpel blade scratching. Two. Alright, so um, now let's have a look because this is getting quite dry now. So, I'm going to remove some of the salt. It's still a bit wet underneath, so I'm just going to leave that one there for a bit. This one um, was obviously a bit wetter, and you've got these nice little um, leafy sorts of shapes and patterns on there, so that's worked pretty well on there. I'm going to leave it for now though and take it off a bit later. And let's have a quick, another quick look at our rice that we were doing. Yeah, there's a few little marks on there. Yeah, it seems to have worked quite well. This one over here is obviously soaked up um, a little bit more and it's still a bit wet. Um, and the couscous, uh, there's lots of little white dots in there. So uh, that's looking good as well. And our bleach spread out quite nicely too and bled in as well. So pretty successful. We'll come back to those again uh, in a bit. Right, let's see. Now, <clears throat> having done that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a background on here onto my um, newt. Now the newt is going to be quite dark, so I want something that's contrasty, so I'm going to I don't know, I'm going to go for something that isn't too dark so that I've got a chance for the newt to stand out. Um, and I think what I'll, st I might start with a little bit of, um, a little bit of this, putting some marks in with. Now, uh, obviously, when, with this is the masking fluid going on now, when the masking fluid is peeled away um, when all the paint is dry. Uh, it's going to be very white, but what I can do then, of course, is I can just apply um, some more colour on top. I'm going to do that, have a bit of fun with it. Just quite random little bits and then when that's dry I'm going to mix it up with some maybe some couscous and some rice and things so we can really have a lot of fun experimenting with these things. So just a few little bits in there just to I suppose these marks will give the picture some energy and I do like my pictures to have a bit of movement and energy in where possible. So there we go. So I've got to let that one dry now. Okay, so let me just put a bit more up there. 
There we go. So that was fun. So we've got that on there. And I can do these little dots as well. So quite loose. I'm, go I'm following the contours of my um, uh, newt by just going around, dotting on a little bit here and there of the masking fluid. All right, so that is obviously that's got to dry as well now. So we'll come back to that during the lesson. But um, so that's a basic introduction to a few of the techniques that you can use with watercolors. And I'll probably go through um, and remind people of those when we have our lesson um, tomorrow and Tuesday. Right, I'll just move that out of the way. And I'm going to sweep these things off here. Um, now, I'm going to put a bit of tissue on the surface of the table so I can just get rid of these. So I do that. Let's just sweep some of these off. Use my scalpel blade. Yes, so I've got this quite nice effect on there, actually. Quite good. Very, very small sort of speckled look on that one. Oh, sorry, let me come out a bit. A very, very small speckly look on this one, which looks really nice. And then on here, we've got some other kind of little, I don't know what you call them, marks on there, I suppose. So let me see if I can just focus in on those so you can see those too. So that was a bit of fun. And on this one with the salt, I'm going to take the salt off now. So all the granules are still on there. I'm going to sweep those granules off from the brown and the purple. Get a bit closer. Okay, so just going to knock those off there like that so this one I think was probably a little bit um, wetter a little bit more wet than this one but we may have some interesting bits I probably could have done with letting it dry a bit longer but yeah this one's got really small marks on it this one's got these lovely big sort of splodges on there too so there we go so there's a few different techniques that you should be able to experiment and try out when we have our lesson uh, tomorrow. So I'm just going to put those on there so that they can be seen. Come back out again. There we go. So a lot of fun sort of just playing around with these things and then tomorrow we'll be doing a little bit more of this but also going to look at these which I've now um, masked masked off ready for um, painting tomorrow so thank you if you've come if you've uh, visited and you've watched our video thank you for coming along we're going to do all of this again tomorrow so um, those of you that maybe miss this or you know you're not in class or whatever you'll be able to catch up with um, that on this video and the one that I make tomorrow okay so um, have a lovely evening everybody and I'll see you uh, very very soon bye bye